Hey everyone, so previously we covered the threshold customization. In this video, we're gonna go through the stacking and padding customization. Now, as always, you do have your two tabs where you can see all the visuals. So you have a combo and combo bar view, and you can go through stacked, 100% stacked, zero base stack, or even a combination of stacks and clusters. Now, but for us, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the training view, and we're gonna build everything from scratch. So first things first, we're gonna add an instance of the combo visual. And then we're going to go into the formatting tab and quickly disable the background and the title so it fits more nicely into the theme of the report. Now, for the setup, we're going to do something relatively basic. We're going to go for only one level of depth. So we're going to add department as our category. And afterwards, we're going to add two series. So we're going to add payout as series one, and we're going to add budget as series two. So something that happens by default also here is both of the series that are added to the visual are essentially also getting clustered. So that's a default behavior. In this case, we don't really need a cluster. We're going to be working with stacks. So for that, I'm going to go into the formatting options, scroll down a bit more, and find Series 2 configuration. And that's going to be the budget now. So scroll down a bit more. We're going to find a setting called stack. So this is the main setting that we're going to be talking about. So when you open it up, you can see that it goes from 1 to 25. And the principle that you, the visual follows here is that by default, every single series has been assigned a different stack number, meaning that series one is stack one, series two is stack two, and so forth. Now, in order to create a stack column chart, all you need to do is make sure that both of these series are using the same stack number. In this case, since I'm customizing series two, I'm going to place it on stack one. And there you go. That's how you create a stack column chart. Now, Something more that you can do with the visual is if we move a little bit upwards, we can find a set tab called stack settings. If we open it up, you can see that we have a mode, separate negative data. We also have draw full area settings. So these are to further customize it. The main ones we are going to be covering today are going to be the mode. So by default, it's sitting on normal mode. The two additional options that we have here are going to be 100% proportional, and it's also going to be zero based one. So with a 100% proportional, something to keep in mind is that whenever you are using percentages, don't forget to adjust the y-axis because otherwise, by default, it doesn't automatically transfer. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, in this case, what we're going to be doing is we will be using zero-based stack. For that to work nicely, we have to go back to the Series 2 customization. And first things first, scroll down a bit more and find a setting called Display Order. Now, when you lower it, you can see that it allows me to define where exactly the series is going to be positioned. In this case, I wanted to have the budget at the back, and I wanted to have the payout in front. So I moved it one level downwards. Now, another thing that you can see here is that even if I did these changes, it's still hard to read the chart. Because when you initially look at it, it's pretty much impossible to tell whether this is normal or zero base stack. So another thing that we're going to be doing here is we're going to move upwards and open up actually series one configuration. That's going to be the configuration for the payout. And if we move a little bit downwards, we can find a setting called width percent. Now width percent allows me to define the width of the column and make it narrower if it's necessary. In this case, I'm going to change it to something like 50. And there you go. You can see that this allows me essentially to have columns within columns. This is a great way on how you can actually also compare targets versus actuals. So this is one of the combinations that you can set up there. Now, once you have these, some other things to keep in mind are going to be the padding combinations. So we're going to close down series one, and we're going to go to column padding. Under column padding, you have four settings. You have the column left and right padding, and you also have the cluster left and right padding. Now, the difference between them is that the column padding is going to be essentially placed for every single column that's within the visual, whereas the cluster is only going to be placed for the categories itself. So for example, what we're going to do here is we're going to just add budget once more as series three. So we have an additional stack right here. Now, going back to the settings, we're going to find column padding. And first, we're going to increase the cluster padding. We're going to change it to something like 15. So you can see that really distinguishes the cluster so you can easily notice them. Now, if we move to the column padding and also increase these numbers, you can see that it essentially created a gap between every single column that's within the visual. So this creates the visual that's essentially still has the clustering. You can noticeably see it, but it's a little bit harder to see. 
So for certain cases, you may either apply column padding or cluster padding, depending on the use case. All right, that's going to be it for the stacking and padding, and I'll see you in the next chapter.